Lush, and I'm here in the Hub Culture Pavilion in Davos at the World Economic Forum. Really pleased to be joined by Ila Norbosch. Thanks so much, Professor of Robotics at Carnegie Mellon. It's a pleasure to be here, Dee. So, are mechanical robot overlords, are they coming? <laughs> they are coming, but what's interesting is people keep thinking that our robotic overlords are going to take over us mm -hmm. uh, because they're going to outwit us and outgun us. But in fact, what they're really doing is they're going to put a few humans in charge of a whole lot of humans. Mm -hmm. So they're going to tip the balance in the favor of a few very powerful people who control all the information that our robotic overlords actually collect on us. Okay. There's a lot of discussion about self-driving cars, uh, about whether we lose our jobs to robots. When I interviewed Lucian Tarnovsky, he was talking about the fact that technology actually takes away more jobs than it creates. Does that go along with what you think? Lucian is sadly exactly right. Mm -hmm. There was a fantastic article in Atlantic Monthly about a year ago talking about uh, milling and machining jobs in central U.S. on the mm -hmm. eastern seaboard. And it was really depressing because it talked about how all of the middle income machinists are losing their jobs because $20,000 robots can do their job now. And they get paid more than $20,000 mm -hmm. each year. That wave front of how much robots can do for what price, it keeps getting worse. It keeps getting cheaper. Mm -hmm. And so every single year we have this constant march where robots can do more than they could do the year before mm -hmm. and they can do it cheaper. And that makes more and more people basically not affordable. So we get left with more and more underemployed people and yeah. the innovation we get out of technology innovation, it can't compensate fast enough because robots are getting better faster than we can innovate. So give me some hope. I know there must be <laughs> robots doing good somewhere, aren't there? Somewhere in Africa we've got... Absolutely. The one way that I always talk about it, that robots can do good is mm -hmm. when they empower people. Mm -hmm. In a way, the ultimate thing we need from robots is to reinforce our humanity, which is kind of ironic. Mm -hmm. And the way they can do that usually has something to do with sensing and big data. Two things that humans are really bad at. Mm -hmm. One is handling massive reams of data. And our world is becoming suffused by massive data. Everything from consumer shopping behavior to the air quality, mm -hmm. the water quality that we have. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we ha are surrounded by issues that directly affect us but are completely invisible to us. Like water quality, like mm -hmm. particulate air pollution. Mm -hmm. And robots are incredibly good at measuring those invisible values and making them visible to us for the first time. Mm -hmm. So the best robots actually serve us by collecting information and then letting us interactively pour through that information and find the patterns that makes our communities more powerful. And can they actually change? For example, if there was a lot of pollution and they were measuring it for you, can they do anything about it? Absolutely. And that's one of the powerful things about robots is, you know, the idea of a robot is that it can sense the world, but then it can push back and change mm -hmm. the world for us. Um, we did a lot of work in Uganda where we mm -hmm. measured air pollution. You have one room homes people live in. The kitchen is the bedroom. And the kid is stoking the fire and they're breathing this horrible smoke mm -hmm. that's causing pulmonary disease, cardiovascular disease. But you can have a robot that measures the particular air pollution. It's got solar panels, it charges itself. Mm -hmm. It measures exactly when the air pollution is getting out of hand. And then it runs a fan and uses up its power, vents the room, sucks in clean air from the doorway. And what you get is one one hundredth the pollution levels you had before. No human could have toggled that fan as fast as the robot can. Mm -hmm. And by providing feedback to the people in the house, they start to see the system. They mm -hmm. start to learn how air pollution works mm -hmm. and how they can change their cooking techniques so they don't make it as polluted. Okay, so it's not all bad news. Not all bad news, but unfortunately it's about 90% bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ila, thank you so much for stopping into the Hub Culture Pavilion here in Davos, and I'm Edie Lush. My pleasure.